One of Each by Mary Ann Hoberman, illustrated by Marjorie Priceman. Oliver Tolliver lived all alone in a little old tumble-down house of his own. It had one little window and one little door. And one little carpet that covered the floor. It had one little table and one little chair. And one little closet and one little stair. And one little bedroom and one little bed, with one little pillow for under his head. And one little blanket and one little sheet and one little bottle to warm up his feet. In the one little kitchen with one little sink, and one little cupboard all shiny and pink. And inside the cupboard, one pear and one peach, one plum and one apple, just one, one of each. One plum and one apple, one pear and one peach, just one, only one, simply one, one of each. There was one little clock that went tick-tock, tock-tick, over one little fireplace built out of brick. There was one little bookcase with one little book, and one little mirror where someone could look. And when Oliver Tolliver looked all around, he smiled with delight, for he liked what he found. It all seemed so fine, every, every one of each thing, that he felt just as happy and proud as a king. And he said to himself, Why, how nice it would be if someone could see this, someone besides me. Why, such a collection would certainly teach how lovely it is to have one, one of each. One house with one kitchen, one plum and one peach. Just one, only one, simply one, one of each. So Oliver Tolliver, carefully dressed in his one little shirt and his one little vest and his one little trouser and one little coat and his one little tie around his one little throat, put on his one little hat on his one little head. And then Oliver Tolliver, Oliver Tolliver cheerfully said, I shall walk out my door and go straight down the street, and the very first person I happen to meet is the one I will ask to come look and come see. I wonder which person that person will be. He started out walking, and soon someone came, a nice-looking person. He asked her her name. She said it was Peggotty, Peggotty Small, and said she was pleased to come over to call. He showed her his stove and his one little sink, and his one little cupboard all shiny and pink, his chair and his table, his bureau and bed, and his one little pillow for under his head. And each time he showed her a one of each treasure, he looked for a sign of enjoyment or pleasure. But all that she did was repeat the same speech. Just one? Only one? Simply one? One of each? Why only one apple? Why only one peach? Why one, simply one, only one, one of each? Oliver Tolliver tried to explain. He said that the reason was perfectly plain. If everything fit from the roof to the floor, and each thing was perfect, why bother with more? But Peggotty answered, I cannot agree. It may be for you, but it isn't for me. There's one chair to sit in, and one plate to eat on, and only one footstool to prop up your feet on. One cup, and one saucer, one pear, and one peach. Oh, dearie, how dreary, with just one of each. 
A guest in your one of each house does not fit. It's made for one person, and you, sir, are it. It's perfect for one, sir, if he's on his own. And so, sir, I'll go, sir, and leave you alone. Then Oliver Tolliver looked all about. He looked up and down, and he looked in and out, and he saw that what Peggotty said was quite true. His one of each house was not suited for two. His one of each things never came to an end. Yet one thing was missing. He hadn't one friend. Oliver Tolliver raced out the door, and he hurried, hurried downtown, and he ran into each store, and in each store he entered, he made the same speech. I'd like this one and that one, just one, one of each. He bought this one and that one, and when he was through, he hurried back home, and now each one was two. And when he'd arranged all his new things to fit, he liked what they looked like, he had to admit. The house was less empty, the kitchen felt new. The table seemed friendlier set up for two. Then when he was finished, he called up Miss P. And invited her over for afternoon tea. And when she arrived, she cavorted with glee. And she said with delight, Why, you did this for me. Why, Oliver, dear, you are truly a peach, with two, really two, always two, two of each. They sat at the table in perfect accord, and they each took a teacup, and Peggotty poured, and they each had a cupcake, and when they were done, Oliver knew two was better than one. Jolly and friendly, more cheerful, more fun. Then little by little new friends came to call, and Oliver found he was fond of them all. What a pity, he thought, that there... What a pity, he thought, there was not any more, more cupcakes to offer, more tea he could pour. Then he had an idea as he opened the door, an idea that he never had thought of before. He sharpened his knife and he polished his plate, and he asked his new friends if they kindly would wait. Then he went to the cupboard, and in he did reach, and took out his fruit. There were now two of each. And he carefully cut them, each plum, peach, and pear, and he passed round the plate so they all had a share, and he found, as he nibbled the peach, pear, and plum, that they, taste, that they all tasted better when each one had some, and that even though each person's piece might be small, eating with friends was the best thing of all, and by sharing his pieces of plum, pear, and peach, each one could have one, still have one, one of each.'